Right now, something real is happening in deep space, and the loudest thing about it is the silence between the facts. An interstellar visitor nicknamed 3i Atlas has re-entered the spotlight with new images and fresh measurements, and the story they tell cuts straight through the rumors. No sci-fi soundtrack, no panic, just the evidence and the questions that evidence forces us to ask. Here's what we can say with a straight face. Recent ground-based frames show a compact source with a faint coma. Not the blockbuster, miles-long tail plastered across thumbnails. From another vantage point, a Mars orbit camera captured a bright nucleus inside a diffuse envelope. Different angles, same core picture, small, tight, and unexpectedly modest for an object that's been hyped to the edge of the internet. If you've seen headlines promising a cinematic plume stretching across space, that's not what the data in hand shows. Not yet. Now for the part that keeps professionals awake. The orbit fits include what astronomers call non-gravitational terms. That phrase sounds dramatic. It isn't, at least not by itself. Comets often nudge themselves a little with asymmetric outgassing, like a slow-motion thruster made of sunlight and vapor. But if you claim acceleration, conservation of momentum comes knocking. Thrust means mass loss. Enough thrust to matter should mean a lot of mass loss. And a lot of mass loss should paint the sky with dust and gas we can actually see. So far, the public imagery does not show a giant obvious cloud. That mismatch is the debate. Not aliens, not cover-ups. A mismatch between the size of the push and the size of the visible exhaust. That's the workbench problem the science is chewing on right now. Add one more twist. Spectra and color reports around objects like this can be confusing in the best of times. Filters differ, exposure depths differ, and geometry can fool you. A dot that looks tailless from Earth can look different from Mars. A bluish hue in one setup can wash out in another. That's why sober sources keep repeating the same line. Wait for more frames, more angles, more spectra, and see what stays true. It's not glamorous, but that boring approach is how we avoid fooling ourselves. So why does this object pull so much gravity online? Because the last time we met a true interstellar visitor that misbehaved, you remember the cigar versus pancake argument and the non-gravitational acceleration headline. We didn't have enough data to close the book. That history hangs over three eye atlas like a shadow. People want a verdict now. The universe rarely pays on demand. Let's zoom in on the claim everyone's passing around. If there's acceleration, where's the tail? Picture a skater throwing sand behind them to slide forward. If they barely move, it's easy to miss the sand. If they lurch, the sand pile should be obvious. With comets, the sand is gas and dust. If the push terms in the orbit solve are big, we should see the ejecta. If the push terms are small or misfit because of sparse data or geometry, then a modest coma is exactly what you'd expect. Those two possibilities are the fork in the road. Which one survives the next month of observing decides whether this story calms down or catches fire. Here's how to read the next wave of images like a pro. First, check the exposure time and the aperture. A 30 second stack on a modest scope will not pull the same faint structures as a deep integration on a big instrument. Second, watch the filters. Broadband color can hide narrow emissions. Narrow band can exaggerate one line and make the scene look greener or bluer than real life. Third, compare geometry. When the line of sight compresses the dust plane, you can get an anti-tail or a stubby look that has more to do with angles than physics. If a still frame looks shocking, ask what had to be true about the camera for that shock to appear. Now, about the talk of signals, engines, and intent. It's fine, healthy even, to list hypotheses from natural to exotic. But in science, the ladder goes in one direction. You climb only when the rungs beneath can hold weight. Right now, the lowest rungs are still being nailed in. Do the orbit fits continue to prefer a non-gravitational term after more data? Does the magnitude shrink as the arc grows, as often happens? Do we get consistent spectra that show which molecules, if any, are driving activity? Do independent teams reproduce the same measurements on different instruments? Those are the rungs. Until they're secure, everything higher. Sales, probes, intentions. Is a store you tell yourself to pass the time. That doesn't mean the evidence trail is boring, far from it. There's a real, testable paradox on the table. Push without plume. If the push holds and the plume doesn't appear, the physics must be different from the textbook comet case. 
that different can still be natural. Jets can be collimated, grains can be big and dark, gas can be dominated by species that our setups miss in certain bands, geometry can hide the worst of it. Or different can mean we've stumbled into a regime that rewrites some expectations about how interstellar ice and rock bodies behave near our sun. Both outcomes would be worth the fuss. What should you watch for next? A few specific tells. If deeper, longer exposures begin to show a structured dust feature aligned with the orbit, that's a win for the comet with Quirks Camp. If narrowband images start lighting up classic gas lines, that's another vote for outgassing. If, instead, we rack up clean multi-night astrometry that keeps the non-gravitational terms alive while imagery refuses to reveal a proportionate dust environment, the puzzle gets sharper, not fuzzier. Also expect coordinated campaigns as the viewing geometry improves. When dozens of instruments stare together, you get side-by-side -side frames that are much harder to explain away. Let's talk expectations. A lot of people have circled a specific mid-December window when the object's position improves for Earth-based observers. That's not prophecy, it's geometry. If activity cooperates, you'll see more frames from big observatories, and the amateur community will flood feeds with stacks and animations. Don't judge any single image like it's a courtroom exhibit. The story emerges in the pattern across nights, filters, and latitudes. All of this raises a bigger point, why this channel exists. You don't need more dramatic music and exploding thumbnails. You need receipts you can check and a steady voice to walk you through them. That's what we do here. When a new image drops, we'll put it side by side with last week's Mark the Differences and explain what those differences can and cannot prove. When someone posts a hot take, we'll match it against the data sets and show you where it holds and where it leaks. If an exotic idea earns its way up the ladder, we'll say so. If it doesn't, we'll say that too. So, where are we tonight? With an object that looks modest in public images, carries tantalizing but not yet final orbit terms, and sits at the center of a global observing plan that will make the next few weeks genuinely decisive. That's not clickbait. That's how discovery actually feels right before it gets real. A mix of impatience, rigor, and the hope that the universe gives us a clean experiment. If you came here for certainty, the sky rarely offers it on schedule. If you came here for truth-seeking with evidence, you're in the right place. This is Interstellar Evidence. I'm going to keep you posted as soon as new frames, spectra, and orbit solutions land. Not with drama, but with clarity you can trust. If you want that kind of coverage in your feed, subscribe and turn on notifications. Drop your questions below. What do you want to unpack next? How orbit fits work? How to read a common image? Or what a real non-gravitational acceleration looks like in numbers? Your comments shape the next episode. Until then, remember the rule we live by here. Extraordinary claims only get extraordinary airtime when the ordinary measurements can't carry the load. Let's see what the next images decide.